Hi everyone! In this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at a game played between Veselin Topalov and Alexei Shirov. This was played in the 2001 Advanced Chess Exhibition in Lyon, Spain, and without further ado, let's look at this game. Topalov starts the game off by playing the move e4, and we have e6 by Shirov. d4 by Topalov, and now d5. The French defense, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, uh, and after d takes e4, knight takes e4, we've transposed to the burn variation of the French. Uh, here, Shirov decides to play the move knight bd7 and knight f3 by Topalov, just continuing development. Shirov here plays bishop to e7, and now we have knight takes f6 check. Uh, bishop takes f6, and here Topalov decides to play the move h4. And if you've remembered from the burn variation video I made, uh, you'll know that this is what uh, usually happens. Basically, h4 will be played, and essentially, if black ever considers castling kingside, then white will always build up his attack with bishop d3, maybe queen e2, queen e4, and put pressure on this h7 pawn. And that's similar to what Topalov is doing right now on move 8. c5 by Shirov, and here queen d2 by Topalov. Uh, c takes d4, knight takes d4, this is all from the opening video I made about the burn. And now we have castles. Uh, castles by Topalov, and now h6. And here, Topalov doesn't actually move his bishop. He instead plays the move knight to f3. And why does he do this? Well, if you capture this bishop on g5 with h takes, then after h takes g5, um, the best move is actually to play e5. But let's assume that you try this move bishop to e7 as black. Uh, what do you get if you play bishop e7? Well, after bishop e7, white gets queen f4, and he gets a lot of initiative. Uh, first of all, there is a threat of queen to h4, which would then threaten checkmate on h8, maybe even checkmate on h7. Uh, and also, uh, if you try to play f6, which tries to get more space, then white always has the option of pushing g6. And your king is so confined in this little area, and it's not going to be very easy for it to escape, and you can already see that there are ideas later on, like queen to h2, uh, and then the pressure along the h-file is going to explode. So instead, queen to b6 was played, putting pressure on the b2 pawn, and in this specific case, Shirov is actually threatening checkmate. So, c3. Uh, Tabalov still doesn't want to capture on f6 and perhaps alleviate the tension uh, on the b2 pawn. Instead, he's just blocking the bishop's diagonal by playing c3. E5, um, Shirov is still not going to capture the bishop because he knows the same idea is present. So we have E5. Bishop to E3, now only backing up because now there's a target that Topalov has. And that is the very, very weak H6 pawn. Queen to A5, uh, Shirov is targeting A2. G4 by Topalov, uh, willingly sacrificing the A2 pawn, but for the attack. Uh, and after G5 is played, even though Topalov would be down material, his attack would occur a lot more quickly than Shirov's. It would be a lot more reasonable for Topalov to win than Shirov. So e4 and now g5. So Topalov is trying to attack the bishop on f6, but at the same time the pawn on h6. Bishop e7 and now g takes h6. And here queen takes a2 is played. Uh, you might be wondering why doesn't e takes f3 played? And it's because after e takes f3, uh, first of all, there's the option of playing h takes g7, but at the same time, there's also bishop d4. And these two threats are basically linked in each other, uh, and now the idea is that if g6 is played, h7 check. Uh, this forces king takes h7, but now h5 is played. And now the position is just too much for Shirov to handle. If he doesn't want to get into trouble via something like hd6, he must play g5. But then there's ideas like queen to e3, and the position is just too dynamic, and it's very hard to see how Shirov can defend in a position where his king is completely surrounded by a lot of white pieces. So instead of playing e takes f3, just queen takes a2, capturing a pawn, threatening uh, queen a1 check, so queen d4 by Topalov. Uh, now queen a1 check doesn't work, because if you go for this, then after king c2, you don't have any follow-up. Uh, you cannot check on a4 because the queen's guarding it, and you cannot move this queen anywhere because you're going to lose checkmate. 
So there, you would have to give up the queen for the rook. So not queen a1 check, instead just knight f6, blocking the threat towards the g7 pawn, and now h takes g7, rook to e8. Uh, sidestepping because obviously your rook was attacked, and now bishop c4. Attacking the queen and forcing it to check or move away, uh, in that case then uh, Topalov would save his knight on f3. So Shiro plays queen to a1 check, and we have king to c2. Queen a4 check, and now bishop b3. The idea is that if queen takes d4, the knight takes d4, and Topalov saved his knight. It's no longer being attacked by the pawn on e4 anymore. And after king takes g7, after the dust has settled, we notice that Shirov has four pawns, and so does Topalov. But Topalov has the advantage because of the amount of control his bishops have over the position. And now Topalov is actually going to win material. So he plays rook dg1, and now we have king to h7. If the move bishop to g4 was played, then that would allow knight f5 check, and this bishop on e7 would be traded off for the knight on d4. Bishop g4 doesn't work, and if you're wondering why knight g4 wasn't played, uh, similar reason. It's actually because after this rook captures on g4, uh, bishop captures on g4, rook g1 can be played. And here, uh, if you try to defend the bishop with f5, that is knight takes f5 check, king moves to say h7, and after this move is played, just knight takes e7, uh, rook takes e7, and rook takes g4. Here, Topalov is easily winning. He has two bishops against the rook, and there's no way for Shirov to counter this. So that is why, instead, we have king to h7, giving up the f7 pawn, and this is all completely lost for Shirov. But it was better than what ha would have occurred if you played knight or bishop g4. So we have bishop takes f5, bishop takes f5, and if you don't really do much, then... Topalov will just play the move bishop to d4, uh, he'll capture on e4 because this knight is pinned, and he will eventually build up with rook g6, bring the other rook over to the g-file, and there's too much pressure on the g-file, on the h-file, and mainly on the 5th and 6th ranks. So, that's why knight d5 was played, but now bishop takes e4, knight takes e3 check, f takes e3, and now Topalov is up 2 pawns, and he has a very good advantage against Shirov. Rook f2 check, king to b1, and now bishop c5. Threatening the e3 pawn, but that's not what Topalov is concerned about. He plays rook g5, and now he's attacking the bishop on c5, but he's also threatening rook to h5. So bishop takes e3. Uh, another threat is that if, let's say that Sheriff played bishop to f8, there's the idea of rook g1. And this just completely crushes the black king, because after bishop to h6, uh, if you play this move rook to h5, then white is already winning. You can try rook to f6, but after bishop takes b7, rook to e8, e4, Topalov is up three pawns and Shirov has no way to defend against this. Just bishop d5, uh, controlling the king from moving, and maybe after a couple of more moves like uh, rook to g3, uh, and then try rook d3, rook d4, and getting around to the queen side, uh, this will be an easy win for Topalov. So that is why uh, bishop f8 was not played, and instead why bishop e3, rook h5 check, king g7, and now rook e1. Targeting the e3 bishop, uh, the bishop retreats back to b6, but now after rook g5 check, uh, Shirov actually resigned the game. There's nothing he can do, because if he plays the move king to h8, then just rook eg1. And there's a simple threat of rook h5 checkmate. And the best move to defend against this would be rook takes b2 check, but after king takes b2, bishop g1, rook g1, this is just an extra piece for Topalov. Uh, on the other hand, you don't have to play king to h8, you could also go king to h6, uh, but then just bishop to f5. And now the threat is to play rook to e6, and that would be checkmate. So that means that Shirov must give up the exchange, and this is still losing for Shirov. Not only is he down the exchange, but he's also down a pawn, and this can be put to good use for Topalov. And finally, instead of playing either of those two moves, uh, you could also just go king to f6, but after bishop d5, uh, rook will come to e6, and there's really no way to defend against it. Basically, these three pieces are more powerful than these three. Uh, this rook hasn't even been activated yet, and this rook may seem a bit active, but in reality, it's not really targeting anything. 
whereas if you look at white's pieces, they're already getting into mating nets against black's king. So black would be completely hopeless, and that is why Shirov actually resigned the game after the move rook g5 check was played here. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess.